Hello, my name is Jessie Lansing and I am at Patterson Dairy. I'm the herdsman here. We have 700 milking cows on 12 Lily A4 robots and we are uh, two years into the robot additions and we added them onto our existing barns that were used for our parlor. So today on our dashboard, um, everything is looking pretty good. Uh, we're sitting at 97 pounds uh, right now with a 2.9 visits and a 1.8 refusals. Um, our energy corrected milk is at 108 pounds, which is pretty good for us. That's a, that's a nice number to see. So I look at this dashboard a couple different times during the day, always in the morning, always at night before I go home, and a time or two in the afternoon if I can kind of get up here depending on what's happening on the farm. Um, I use all of the information on our dashboard to kind of look at the cows as a whole and assess what needs to be done that day. So we are now inside the barns. We have four pens of 180 cows in each pen. Um, we have pen one and two for our mature cows and we're going to go take a look at them. So this is our robot barn and we have these back pens which are uh, short pens. 15 stalls of sand bedded free stalls in them and we use those stalls for fresh cows, um, any cows that need extra attention and training fresh heifers as well as routing all the animals back to these pens for herd check, trimming, sorting, and vaccination and AI breeding. So we have robots set up for three robots per pen and they are in an L formation. And that lets us utilize the sort gate so that we can kind of get cows to the back pen. So this is what it looks like pretty typical for us in the afternoon. Uh, we feed once a day during the afternoon and we found to do that was easier for us in the morning. Uh, that lets our cows kind of get fetched in the morning for whoever needs to be pushed up for visits, uh, that lets us get treatments done in the morning without disturbing the cows. And if we drop feed in the afternoon, then we can be out of the pen for a few hours and let those cows really uh, take advantage of the fresh feed in the bunk. And you'll see a bunch of cows are kind of hanging around right now in the robot. That's pretty typical as well during the feeding. Um, it kind of gives a chance for those cows to Kind of the, the less aggressive cows will take the opportunity to get to the robot while the other cows are at the bunk. Uh, feed is pushed up every two hours with a Juno. We have one Juno per barn. At the back of these L's in the corner of the barn, uh, there's a fetch pen that we utilize for animals that need to be fetched to the robot. Uh, inside the robot, we have three different kinds of feed that we're using, which is pretty unique for this area with other robot farms. Uh, we have a high type or a high energy pellet and a low energy pellet for gluten as well as liquid molasses. And we added the liquid molasses uh, just a little over a year and a half ago, and that really helped our visits in terms of getting cows to, to utilize the robot more effectively on their own. Uh, we mixed the, the bunk ration is set at a certain level and then we use the high energy and the low energy pellets to kind of supplement the cows that make more milk and need more energy versus the cows that are late lactation and need less. We just kind of adjust it on that level. So now that you've seen our mature cows, we can go down to the lower barn, which has pens three and four. And those are our smaller cows and first lactation heifers. Let's go take a look. So this is our lower barn or groups three and four. This is group three behind me, and group four is a mirror image of the pen. Uh, group three is our smaller cows, so most of them are second lactation, and then pen four is all of our first lactation animals. And we separate them according to size as well as lactation, just so that we can let those first lactation animals really not get bullied with the older ones that know what's happening. And we found that that really helps us a lot with the production of the heifers on this farm. So our barn is a retrofit. Uh, we used to have just long, a barn was here, and we had eight pens. Uh, to put on the robots, we added 
basically to the north side of the barn. And we added on uh, what's essentially is the robot section as well as the sort pen. So our old barn would end right here. And everything on this side with the robots, the sort pens, the fans is all new construction. And then how we utilized our existing pens to make it effective for our robots was that we opened up the middle gates and made four long pens versus having eight uh, shorter pens. And these guys are also on the same type of pellets. We have the high energy, low energy, and molasses in these barns as well. We have sand bedding in these free stalls as well. And we bed twice a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that gives everybody a chance to have fresh bedding and nice new sheets to lay on and stay comfortable and clean. Um, cow cleanliness and cow comfort is super important to us. A comfortable cow is a productive cow. So if she's comfortable in laying down and maximizing her, her resting time, she's maximizing her potential for milk. And that's really important to us. Um, we do hoof trimming once a week, which is super important to us as well. A cow has her whole entire life to walk on her feet, and that's super important to take care of those as well. Yes, there are a few jerseys in this barn. There's just a little extra color. They add a little extra butterfat and protein, and that never hurts anybody. More about our retrofitting for the barn. Um, we used to scrape the pens when we had the parlor system working with a tractor and a tire scraper. Uh, since going to robots, we have installed automatic scrapers and we just put them in a configuration that still utilizes the flume that was existing in our parlor that goes out to our manure pit. Um, so the scrapers come from either end of the barn and dump into the middle of the barn flume alleyway. And we just opened up these gates. So what would have been two separate pens, one here and one there, uh, we have opened them up to make it one long pen, uh, essentially putting two pens of 80 cows into one pen of 180 cows. So I had mentioned earlier that we had the L formation of robot setup. Um, so we have the capital L formation for these. Uh, it works really well for us. That allows us to have cows that prefer to be milked on one side or the other. Okay, we put the robot they would like to be milked at. And yes, cows do have favorite robots. Um, we also like this formation because it allows us to sort off animals that need to have vaccinations or breedings or just any kind of attention given to them. And this allows us to do that. The cows can bring in, bring themselves up to the robot, get milked, and then be sorted into our back pens for further assessment or our hands-on care. So speaking of this retrofitting, this farm did not start off at 100 or 700 milking cows forever. Uh, Lee Patterson started this farm on halves with 29 cows in 1979. Um, and a little fun fact that he shared with me about this is that what we produce for milk in six days right now took him an entire year when he first started. So you can just make a testament to how dairy farmers are persistent and will continue to grow and make the best of situations. Um, he did it all in little steps. So we we here at Pattison Dairy are fortunate enough to have cows that have lasted the test of time and that have, have uh, produced with the times. So here's one of our Junos. We have two of these in operation here on the farm, um, one for each barn, and it runs every two hours uh, after we drop feed, and it runs continuously on those two hours. and one CU unit. And this happens to be in the pen with our second lactation house. Um, we keep these robot rooms clean, just like everything else on this farm, cleanliness, next to godliness. So what I come in here to do is I look at how is everything working. Um, does something need to be handled with 
with the robot arm itself. Um, I'll be training a new heifer. And I like to look at this screen when cows come in. This kind of gives me an overview of the animal when she's in there. So you have a cow number, her collar number, uh, pounds of milk that she's giving, and how long her box time was for her last visit, as well as the amount of feeds A, B, and liquid, meaning high energy, low energy, and liquid molasses. Um, if I open this robot up, this is kind of the brain. And we just like to make sure that everything is good in there. Um, I like to look at the weigh jar, make sure that everything is kind of flowing in there. The milk looks clean. Uh, one of the cool features that we added on to the single robots uh, were that we put on the somatic cell pump reader, which allows us to kind of look at the herd. Uh, we have it sampling every visit that that cow makes. If they use the single robot, meaning the one that's accessible only to the back pen and the uh, big pen as well, that we get a somatic cell count data point on her. And we can track that on her cow graph on our computer system. Um, and if we have a cow that's questionable, we'll actually run her through there so that we can find out what that somatic cell is on that cow on that day. So here is an example of what the feed looks like that's being dispensed to these uh, cows in the robot. So there's two different size pellets in here. The large size pellet is the corn gluten or the low energy feed for low producing cows. The small pellet is the high energy or high protein feed. And you can tell it's nice and sticky with the liquid molasses that's dosed on there. Uh, and this is given to the cows at every visit in the robot. And that brings them kind of to a snack point. They would like to eat this. This is a reward for coming to the robot. and. They really enjoy this liquid molasses. It's kind of like adding candy to a ration for them. Next up is our milk house. So this is our milk house, and we are direct loading onto semi-tankers. Uh, we have three tankers that are set up. Um, one, two, and three. We're currently filling tanker number two today. Uh, we fill a tanker about roughly every 17 hours. So in our milk house, we have what I like to call our center vat. This is where all the milk is pumped into when the robots are running. And then these are called buffer tanks. And the buffer tanks hold our milk while we do the main wash system, um, like washing our, our whole pipeline system for the robots. Um, we do utilize a chiller and plate cooler to keep our milk at a cool temperature. We put the stainless steel floor on there to make sure that the floor uh, doesn't get eroded and eaten away by all the chemicals used to keep our milk house clean. So we wash this system three times a day, twice during the day shift and once during the night shift. So everything is, is clean and ready to go and filters are changed at the time of the wash as well. So one thing that we really focused on when starting up this dairy robots is that we focused on what was going to be best for the cows. It was very centered around what the cows needed to uh, just be successful with training in your robots. So as much of a pain as it was for the people to kind of do extra steps, it was what was necessary for the cows. Um, we also, when putting in these robots, had a herd base that was not just fresh heifers. So we had a we had to deal with training older cows into robots, which is a, a chore in and of itself. Those girls had been used to the parlor for so long. This is a new system. Um, but we're really seeing the benefits of that now with having these older cows maximizing their potential on the robots. Um, we can have cows that will peak out at 180 pounds now because they are allowed to milk more than three times a day, like when they were in the parlor. Um, it's really important that we are always cow focused. We're really attentive to detail here, really paying attention to our animals and what they are telling us. Um, another fun fact about the farm or key feature that we utilize is that we don't have any cows that are being dumped from the robots up here because of antibiotic use. We have a separate location um, in our maternity barn where I milk the fresh heifers and cows and I will take them down there for their treatment if they require antibiotics so that it's just a peace of mind factor that we don't have to worry about the robots.
robots um, missing a wash or accidentally flushing milk into the tanker, which would cause a, an antibiotic contamination. So it's another safety factor for us. Thank you for visiting Patterson Dairy in Garnerville, Iowa with our 12A4 Lately Robots.